All right, so today I want to talk about error handling, specifically the window error event and error events that you can attach to script tags and images. Now, I've talked before about the try catch block. Whenever you have some code that you want to test, you can put it inside of a try catch block. So anything that I put inside of here, I can attempt to run this code. And if there's an error, I can catch it, write that out to the console, submit it to a server, do whatever I want with that. Now, in theory, you can just wrap your entire file in a try catch block. So any errors that happen inside there, you catch them and then can report them. But it's not a very usable thing and it doesn't work for scripts that you bring in from other sources. So I could add another script tag that's loading other scripts. Um, with ES6 now we've got the ability to import other script files, so we're losing the ability to do this anyway. It's not a great practice. Try catch is really intended to, I want to try this one thing. You know, I've got a specific thing in mind that I want to attempt and if it fails, let me know so I can try something different. I can do a fallback, check to see if this thing runs. If it doesn't, then I'll do something different. So what I want to do here, just, just to demonstrate that it works, uh, if I put something in here, I've got a reference error. This is something that doesn't exist. When I load my page, run this, I get a reference error. Now it's this line right here on line 29 in the file on error, line 29, that's where this is happening. So right here, the console error message that's being written out, it's telling me line 29, this has been caught. I can run one of my functions. These have got reference errors inside them as well. There we go. Reference A is not defined. And here's the call stack. This is the sequence of things that happen on the page. All right, so that's it. That's the try catch block. Now, again, we don't want to do that, wrap all our all of our code inside there, but we can use try catch in certain cases. It's a good thing to use to handle your potential errors. Now we have a built-in thing called window on error. This can be set equal to a function that you will want to run. This function will run when an error happens anywhere on the page. Now we haven't had to wrap everything around. We're just saying, okay, inside my script on my page, if there's an error that happens, let me know about it. And inside of here, we're going to get the message that would come back, the URL, so the page that we're on, the line number, the column number potentially, and then the error object itself. All of these things get passed in by default. When you have window on error, you can do this. So this is one way of handling errors globally. Now if I was to do that same thing here that I was doing before to cause that reference error, and there, and we'll just, yeah, we'll put them all out. Why not? There we go. Console log, not error. That's why we're getting the black text here. So window on error, write this out to the console. So we got uncaught reference error. That was the message. Uh, ASD is not defined. That whole thing right up into there, that is the message. The URL, that's the file. Then we've got the line number, the column, and this is the error object itself down here. Now it's being written out twice once with the console log and then again it's saying now I've got an uncaught reference error so why is that appearing and that's happening because I haven't done anything the error still happened there was still something wrong on my page if I want to do something different inside of here instead of approaching it this way with window on error what I'm going to do is what I prefer to do is I'll say window add event listener and I'm going to say error. That's the event that I want. I want the error event on my window. So when the error event happens, I'm going to have a function that runs. Like all add event listeners, I get past an event object. In this case, because it's the error type, this is going to be an error event. That's the type of the type of this. So ev.type. 
refresh that. There we go. That's the type of my event. It's an error event. And again, I've got that red message coming up because I didn't do anything about the fact that there was an error. However, what do browsers do by default? When an error happens, they, hey, you know what, there's an error and it writes it out to the console to say that there was an error happening. If I don't want that to happen, I can actually come in here and say prevent default. Tell the browser not to do what it normally does. There we go. I've hidden that information inside of here. I've done something. This function right here, this is me handling the error, doing something about it. Maybe I wanted to attempt something different. Maybe I wanted to check on the type of the event. I can also get in, get the other information. So let's do a console.warn instead, just to make it appear different. And my event object, there we go. We'll open this all up. Here we go. This is EV. This is the event being passed in here. And column number 9, line number 28, type error. That's what we wrote up above here. There's the type. So the message, uncaught reference error, that's probably what we want to display. Maybe we want to log that. Maybe we want to save it somewhere in local storage or send it up to the server whatever you want to do with it. Maybe you want to run some alternate code. We can do all of that from here. And prevent default means I've got the warning showing up here, but I don't have that one with the red X. So that means the page is going to continue to run. I'm not getting that error that's going to stop everything from happening. Now, we've got window on error. We can also add on error events like this to the image or to other script tags. So I can get a reference to this one right here. Let's say if I do document add event listener DOM content loaded. So I'm waiting for my page to load. Inside of here I'm going to get a reference to that image tag. I'll use get element by ID and bad image, that's the name. That was its ID right here. I can add an on error the same way I did with the window object. So right here, I did window on error, image on error. Really, the only error that's going to happen with the image is, hey, it didn't load. So I'll say console.warn image did not load. There we go. We got the error, so there was no image to load because we didn't have a, a source for it here. If I do that, there we go. So I got the error, and here it is. All right, so we can handle errors on script tags and image tags. We can handle errors on the window object. So window on error gives you this list of properties being passed in. If you do add event listener inside, uh, oh, sorry, right here. If you window add event listener for error, then you're going to be passed an event object. And from the event object, you can get dot type, dot message, dot line number, and so on. So all the same properties as you have here, but you've got the event object. Now there is one place where this is going to fail. We're not going to get the information that we want. And that's in those cases where I have a script and I'm going to load something from, let's say, some other domain. Now, by default, what happens is when you try to load this script, if it's coming from a different domain than the one that you're on, the security settings in the browser, regardless of which browser you're using, they want to protect you from this. So if something goes wrong in their script, they don't want that script to leak any potential uh, information which could lead to somebody hacking into to that script. So they just hide it. The way you can get around it um, is by 
coming in here and adding the attribute cross origin and setting it to anonymous. This tells your browser, so this browser right here, not to send cookies, not to send any HTTP credentials, any identifying information from this browser should not be sent to the server to request this file. So if you're not sending that information and that server, whatever this domain is, has got the uh, access control allow origin header set to say, yeah, yeah, you can ask for anything over here. There's no security concerns on our side either. You'll get that script back. And then with this added, as long as they've got the HTTP header set for access control allow origin, when the script comes back, if an error does take place inside of here, then we're going to be able to do the window add event listener error or window on error, and we will get the actual message back. We'll get all these details up here. If you don't do this, if you don't add the cross origin anonymous, and there is an error in that other script, then all you're going to get inside of here, instead of something like uncaught reference error that tells you actually what's going on, you'll just get a message that says script error. Just this generic script error. It won't tell you the line number, it won't tell you the file number, it won't tell you um, the column number. None of that valuable information about what really went wrong will come in. So if you are using scripts from other domains, it's a good idea to add this here. Then you can add the error listeners to wait for those things to go wrong and actually handle them in your code and actually get some valuable information back. All right, so that's a lot of information I've thrown at you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them down below. Um, I'll leave a link to this code that you can play around with inside the comments as well. And as always, thanks for watching.